and bloody, at least not yet. The pink is just a phenol red pH indicator. Later I'll add um, fetal bovine serum, FBS, and this will provide nutrients um, to make this food even more nutritious for my cell culture. So when it comes to cell culture for mammalian cells, so like various human cell lines or mouse cell lines and things like that, they need a lot, um, they're a lot pickier than say when we grow bacteria. And so typically when we grow bacteria, we'll be just like, eh, we'll just toss it in some um, LB, some SOB, some TB, there's some different ones. Um, but those bacteria are pretty happy with uh, just growing in some basic nutrients. But when it comes to these more like specialized cells, they're more picky. And so we, our media that we use, the food that we use to grow them in, is going to be um, more specialized for the different cell types, more expensive, um, but there's some basic things that these all have. And they have typically have like a base or a basal media, and then like you supplement it with various things depending on the cell type. So for example, one of the common ones that we use to culture basic cells, like HEK cells and, um, in adherin cells, is DMEM, um, Dolbeco's Modified Eagle Medium. Um, and you'll see that there's, you know, when you look at one of these bottles, you often see like a plus, plus, minus, or a plus, 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 or a plus something or whatever. This is because there's different formulations, and so some of the things that you get have it like with various things supplemented in, and other things you add later. Um, and so we'll add the FBS to this, um, and some people add like antibiotics, although that's uh, not typically recommended. Um, it's been traditionally been people would add like um, penstrep, penicillin, streptomycin, um, but people are trying to move away from that for various reasons, including that if you have sterile culture, you shouldn't um, be, have to worry about there being bacterial and that sort of thing. And if there are bacteria and that sort of thing in there, you want to know about it. Um, and so by leaving out the antibiotics, you can tell also the antibiotics could be doing things to your cells. And also, also, um, antibiotic resistance is this huge problem, and so we don't want to contribute to it um, by adding selective pressures. But anyway, so those are some, like later, so there's also a push to kind of get away from the FBS, um, to, to get away from serum. Um, so serum, basically this media has like the basic nutrients. It's got the salts, it's got the pH stabilizer, um, different, buff different ones have like different buffers, so they might have a um, sodium bicarbonate buffer like this, and that's why the pH indicator is really important, is that um, it, these are designed typically to be grown at a certain CO2. So you have like in your incubator, it's controlled at the CO2, typically like 5% CO2. This, at this level, um, the CO2 basically when it dissolves in a liquid, then it acidifies the liquid. And there's this whole like bicarbonate buffer system that helps keep pH stable, both in us and in some of the media. Um, so as if the CO2 was higher, then the media would be more acidic. Um, and when the media gets more acidic, it gets yellowy. Typically it's getting yellowy not because there's more CO2, but because the cells are, um, they're like getting, when the cells like overgrow and stuff, when they start growing, they're using up the media, they're actually um, secreting or excreting, secreting um, various things, acidic things into the media and the media will start to turn like orange and yellow. That means that, oh, it's time to either change out the media, so just suck it off and add new media, or potentially split the cells and take the cells off of the dish um, and um, then replate them later, or like dilute them and replate them in fresh media and all that stuff. Um, so the pH indicator is really important. If the pH gets too high, so if you get like basic conditions, um, then it can actually turn like purpley, like a darker color. And this can happen, say, if you're working outside of the incubator for a long time because you're not in that CO2 environment, the CO2 is going to be lower and therefore your media is going to get purpley or darker. Um, the temperature and stuff can also influence this. Um, so the pH indicator is just like a phenol red. Um, there's also some media push to get away from that. It can like mimic like estrogen or something. Um, it can interfere with a couple different things, but it's traditionally um, not a prop thought to be a problem um, and is often used. Um, so that's the pH indicator. Um, there's also the salts. There's some um, amino acids, so protein letters. Um, and you often see that different protein, like extra, might get added. So you might have to add like non-essential essential amino acids or that sort of thing. Often what's added is 
um, glutamine. So here this is an L-glutamine. You might sometimes see um, like glutamax. So basically glutamine is a really important amino acid. So it's one of our protein letters, so we need it to make proteins, um, but it's also really important for making other things. And so glutamine serves as a basic building block um, for part, scavenging parts. And so it's the source of nitrogen for making like nucleic acids with DNA and RNA. Um, and various other um, compounds that rely on nitrogen. It can be a nitrogen source as well as an important energy source and a like regulation source and a protein making source and all of these different things. Problem is glutamine, it has the tendency to kind of like break down. It's not very stable in solution um, and at least in like these these culture media and stuff like over time. I mean like normally our bodies are just like using it right but when it's just like sitting in a shelf um, then that could be a problem. Um, and so often these are supplemented with additional glutamine and the glutamax that's basically it's a dipeptide so it's two amino acids it's alanine and glutamine. This is more stable um, and so this way it won't break down as easily and um, yeah so that's what you see if you see glutamax that's the thing. Basically, the cells will start secreting this um, peptidase that will actually cleave them, um, cleave them apart. So you get the alanine and the glutamine, and the glutamine is what you really care about in this case. Um, and so you get glutamine. Um, you also often see supplemented with glucose. Um, so we need to give them some energy, as well as um, often sodium pyruvate, another energy source that cells like um, thought to help cells grow um, in various cases. Um, so these are like supplemented things on top of the DMAM. Um, there's also like MEM, there's also like, basically there's a bunch of different, um, bunch of different of these base media and different cells have different base media that they like, and then the extra stuff that you can add in. Sometimes you add the extra stuff in ex later because just because you can use the same base for different, making different things. So if you have one cell line, you can add this things to it and another, you can add these things to it. Um, and others because sometimes these other, these things that you add can be unstable and so you don't want to, um, have them in the solution, you often have these stocks like frozen and that sort of thing. A really common thing that you add is going to be FBS um, or fetal bovine serum. So basically this media doesn't have everything that the cells need. This is just a base media. If you had like a complete media, that would have everything that the cells needed. These complete medias can be made either by supplementing the base media or by using like a chemical, a defined media. So they actually sell media that has everything that you would need. Um, and this like made from the various components rather than having to add like natural components adding the like serum they'll have like everything will be already like pre-purified and added um and this prevents having to deal with the batch to batch variability of this serum so why do we need this serum anyway the serum has like very important things including growth factors um, various protein carrier proteins that are going to both help things that you want to get into cells get into the cells um help keep bind toxins and stuff and keep them out of the cells. So the reason that fetal bovine serum is often used is because the serum has um, a larger number of those growth factors um, and less of like some weird immune stuff and stuff um, that could prevent, that can cause problems. Um, and so it has more of the stuff that you want and so this is why it's traditionally used. But it can also cause problems, especially if you are trying to make something for like medical use. Um, and so there's a big push to make things that are def like defined, so basically made from the different components and then put together rather than having the FBS. Another thing is that the FBS is going to vary from batch to batch and that could be a big problem if your experiments are then inconsistent. And there could be other stuff in there that you don't really need, but the problem is there's so much in there that you do need. There's all these different growth factors, there's all these hormones, there's these um, cells, vitamins, trace minerals, all these various things. And so scientists have to like figure out all these different things that the cells need um, in order to recreate it in the absence of actually having the FBS. Um, also different types of cells. Um, so some cells are a lot more picky. Um, and some cells, especially if you're trying to do like work with primary cell culture. So often we're dealing with cell lines that are like immortalized or immortal. So like cancer cell lines and that sort of thing that'll just kind of grow forever. Like these HHK cells or HeLa cells, these will grow for really, really well um, in just like a simplish media. But I mean, not like this, but I mean like with supplemented with the FBS and all that sort of thing. Oh, and then you also like filter it after you do that. But anyway, so you like warm those up and you add them and then you filter it through the sandwich filter. Yeah, I was doing that this morning. But anyway, 
Um, there's other cell lines like primary cell lines. So if you just like take the tissue from someone and you try to get it to grow in a dish, it's used to having a lot more uh, things in order to tell it, okay, like settle down on the plate, expand. Um, so basically cancer cells and these immortalized cell lines, they're really good at growing uncontrollably because, and that's why we use them. But cells that are more like natural cells, like cells that are more like normal cells at least, they are, they have signaling pathways and things that are telling them don't divide more, don't divide more. And so we have to kind of like bypass that in order to get these cells to grow in culture well. There's also things like if you want to actually differentiate cells, so if you want to take like induced pluripotent stem cells, so these are basically you take cells from like skin or something and then you like convert them to a stem cell like state. Um, so basically in this stem cell like state then they can differentiate or they can branch out into different pathways. So they can become like cart cells, or they can become lung cells, or they can become all these different kinds of cells. But in order to get them to go down those paths to meet those specific cells, you have to add different growth factors. Um, and you have to add them in like different sequences and different times. So that you're basically trying to train these cells to become the type of cells you want them to be. Um, and so I did some work with this um, during a summer in undergrad. Yeah, um, it was pretty cool. It made some like brain like cells. Um, but anyway, so those basically, you would have a lot more different steps and different things that you're adding in, rather than having to just uh, base, supplement your basic media. Um, so basically, often you have a media like this, and then you're adding FBS, you're potentially adding antibiotics, um, and then you filter it, um, and your cells will be hope happy, hopefully. Um, and then there are different media with, different, um, with various different components, depending on your different needs, um, but you likely have to deal with um, trying to figure out this, what the cell needs and there's protocols and various things you can find about what cells like what type of food. Um, and so hope that helps and happy growing. I'm also leaving a link to this really helpful article um, that I found, Cell Culture Media a Review um, by Aurora. And it has information about all of the different media, um, basic components of them, different ones that are used for different things. They have um, like studies where one's used one versus another, links and stuff. So this is a really great article and so I found it really helpful and I will share the link.